and we are diving in without without any lead up okay uh right into a, a paper title immediately okay so we're going to start talking about harmine how it was found what it's done and then we'll kind of like break it apart into pieces and talk about how it fits into the whole here so this paper was i believe published in 2015 and uh, it's titled, A High Throughput Chemical Screen Reveals That Harmine Mediated Inhibition of DYRK1A Increases Human Pancreatic Beta Cell Replication. Now, for those without bio biology and chemistry degrees or any experience reading scientific papers, it sounds like a lot. But all we're really interested in is... This right here increases human pancreatic beta cell replication. Okay. They've found something that leads to beta cells being able to replicate, which as someone with type one diabetes is what we've been told is the issue, right? We have these, uh, this, whether it be the autoimmune system or, uh, vitamin and mineral imbalance that has caused our beta cell mass to decrease, thus decreasing our insulin it's been unable to regrow to a state that keeps us alive, right? So we become and remain dependent on exogenous insulin. So beta cell replication, I like, I like where this is headed, okay? So in this paper, they took a huge amount, like a huge database of different compounds and they tested to see what effect they would have on growth factors in beta cells. And there were a handful that came back as being better than all the rest, right? And that's where Harmine got introduced. That's the plant compound. It was very effective at inducing cell growth. And it inhibited a specific set of protein kinases that were tied to stopping cell proliferation. So this makes sense something that stops the inhibitor right if you stop what's stopping beta cell growth beta cells grow and that's kind of how they figured out what how this was doing what it was doing um, one of the things they discovered was it was not specific to beta cells right so the effects that this compound had on cells ability to regenerate was not just beta cells it was alpha cells it was all all different kinds of cells um, and that sheds light on one of the issues of beta cell growth is we want something as people with diabetes that is going to target beta cells specifically without growing anything else. Uh, if you, if you grow things that aren't, that you don't want to grow, you are promoting imbalance. That's where things like tumors and cancer come in as well. You really don't want things to, to grow outside of the scope of where you actually are wanting to grow. But one important point here that I thought was unique and caught my attention was the fact that they tested this beta cell growth in a number of types of diabetes. And what I mean when I what I mean when I say types of diabetes is they tested a lot of different ways that diabetes can develop. Uh, the first is a uh, partial pancreatomy. So they had mice whose pancreas was partially like, maybe we'll, we'll say cut in half. I don't know if it was actually cut in half, but a piece of it was taken off, right? And that compromised the mouse's ability to stabilize its blood sugar. They had the immunodeficiency model, which had a mouse with an immune system that was lacking a lot of the key white blood cells and leukocytes that are responsible for protecting beta cells. And then they also had the inflam inflammation model, the inflammatory model, where a specific inflammation-inducing compound, strepsocytosin, which we've talked about on this podcast before, is injected and it has a targeted effect on destroying beta cells, okay? A lot of the times in diabetes research, what you'll see is they'll kind of do like a cover, like 
oh, you know, how do you make diabetes in the lab? And a lot of the times people use strepsozytosin because it's an easy, you inject the mouse, the beta cells die, you now have a mouse that is exhibiting the same symptoms of someone with diabetes. This one looked at it in a bunch of different ways to see how versatile the growth effects were of harmine, which is the plant compound, okay? So let's get introduced, right? Harmine was this plant compound that was showing all of these incredibly promising results in, get, in getting beta cells to grow. So harmine is a harmala alkaloid. Alkaloids are a very popular uh, plant, plant group in health and wellness because of their antioxidant qualities, their abilities to mitigate ox oxidative stress. Um, it's a beta-carboline, which has to do with its shape. You have all of these uh, carbon rings here. Again, associated a lot with being an antioxidant, managing oxidative stress being very good thing for um, health. They're, if you were to Google beta-carboline and the types of things that harbor beta-carbolines, it's all like very healthy food, vegetables, fruits that you're, you'd be familiar with. It's also a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, MOA, or MAO actually. And we'll talk more about this, but this has some societal and drug implications. Um, We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. But again, it's there's a, a lot going on with this harmine molecule. Um, and I thought, interestingly, it was tested as a treatment for Parkinson's in the 1930s. So it has some very strong connections to uh, neurological disorders. And so harmine was actually something that was used um, with success in um, managing Parkinson's disease back in the 1930s. So another, it's a plant compound, right? So, okay, what plants? And passionflower is one of them. Syrian rue is another one, which is a Mediterranean, um, kind of like a desert shrub, desert bush, um, Aztec tobacco, um, Nicotiana, Nicotiana rustica, I believe. Yeah, Nicotiana rustica is the... Uh, the scientific name for it. And then this is where that MAOI, the monoamine oxidase inhibitor uh, and the psychedelics, um, it comes, it's also found in the vine of the gods, which is Banister, Banisteriopsis capi, um, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it's actually a component of ayahuasca, which is the tribal medicine that is very popular in the Amazon, but really it's it's grown in popularity worldwide for its um, neurological, psychological, spiritual health benefits. And Harmine is actually one of the, one of two psychoactive components in ayahuasca. Um, it's sourced from a number of different uh, different sources in the traditional ayahuasca brew. It's this vine of the gods, the Banisteriopsis capi, that is usually where the harmine comes from. Um, harmine, the monoamine oxidase, actually synergizes with what we associate with being the most active component of ayahuasca, which is dimethyltryptamine or DMT. That's kind of the, you know, uh, LSD rainbow light show drug that we associate with um, using ayahuasca, but actually harmine is basically like uh, the key in the ignition to allow for DMT to have its amazing effects. So um, just an interesting, interesting tidbit and something we'll consider later on when we think about how with all of these wonderful things that harmine can do, what might be some of the limitations when it becomes to implementing it in the general public. 